Hey there, rock stars, all you geo dudes, starlights, uh, uh, gems out there. This is time for another edition of Rock Talk. Let's talk about it. Taco, taco about it. That was a taco pun. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. In my last episode, we were talking about rocks. What are rocks exactly? And as a part of that definition, we came to the conclusion that rocks are inorganic solids that are um, naturally occurring and composed of a mineral or minerals. And so we were kind of left on a bit of a cliffhanger last time, they essentially relying on the definition of a mineral to uphold what a rock is. But what is a mineral exactly? <clears throat> and that's what we're going to find out on this week's episode. As it turns out, minerals are everywhere. Like here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And believe it or not, Even here. So, what is a mineral? <sighs> a mineral is an inorganic, naturally forming solid with a crystalline structure and a set amount of chemical composition or compositions. Whew. Okay, so really though, what does that mean? Let's break it down. First, naturally forming. Naturally occurring basically means that it wasn't made in a lab, it was formed out in nature due to natural earth processes, not man-made. Inorganic, meaning that it is not derived from living matter, or in a more broad sense that it's not mostly composed of carbon, which there are actually some interesting exceptions to, which we'll touch on a little later on in the video. Solid um, means that it is like a rock, not a liquid or a gas. It's going to maintain a solid structure crystalline structure means that the individual molecules of the um, mineral form together to form a crystal lattice which is just an organized repeating structure that is continued out in all three dimensions in a three three directional state for example this quartz crystal which based off of its unique chemical um, structure forms this lattice and this piece of fluorite, which because it has a different chemical structure, forms its own unique and different um, crystal lattice. So uh, scientists that study minerals, mineralogists, can actually take a look at the way that crystals form and the shape, the habit that they exhibit, and based off of that can identify them, which is pretty cool and um, is a really neat thing that mineralogists do. And finally is the set chemical composition or uh, chemical compositions, which is interesting because uh, minerals can have a diverse array of um, different kinds of elements that make them up. Some minerals can just be composed of one single element, like this piece of copper, which is just made up of a single element. Um, in fact, most metals like gold, copper, um, iron that are going to be, of course, naturally occurring, forming in the earth, are going to be minerals. Minerals can also be composed of um, large molecules as well. For example, the mineral coming tonight. No, and no, I'm not making any of this up. This is an actual mineral. This is an actual mineral formula based off of the base molecules that make up certain types of minerals mineralogists can actually classify minerals based off of those specific molecular constituents which is kind of neat and another really cool thing that mineralogists do so mineralogists can identify minerals based off of a number of different factors you have the luster or the shine how it reacts to light and how that plays off of just the naked eye um, you have the crystal cleavage hey oh which is actually how the microscopic molecular bonds break 
and you can actually see that and each mineral that exhibits cleavage is going to break in a certain specific way, which is kind of cool. And then you have the hardness of a mineral, hey -o, which is how hard or uh, soft it is going to be compared to each other. And there's actually an entire classification scheme of minerals based off of how hard they are called the Mohs Hardness Scale. That Mohs, he's a, he's a real hard one, man. And then there's the crystal habit that I mentioned earlier, the crystal shape, how the crystal form um, appears and the different um, appearances that that can take. And then there's the crystal streak, hey -oh, which is actually really cool when you take a crystal and you can actually get a ceramic streak plate, which I don't have, I um, might wanna invest in one of those down the line. And you can actually take a mineral and streak it and you can get a different color based off of um, how it powders, how it pulverizes and can kind of play on light in different ways as opposed to its crystal form. Now, due to the diverse classification scheme of minerals, it includes such a wide range range of different elements and, and molecular structures that um, they're actually an extremely useful and diverse group of uh, materials that are used in all kinds of common household, um, household objects that you probably don't even realize. Old Smashy here is made up of steel which is actually an alloy, which is a uh, combination of iron and a few other elements in there. And iron is a mineral. Talc powder, talcum powder as it's called, contains talc, which is a one on the Mohs hardness scale. And this toothpaste, among other things, can contain calcium carbonate, which is a mineral, and in some cases, even fluorite, which is another mineral. Pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that your like, normal toothpaste? <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> uh, oh no, oh god, can't waste toothpaste. Eat it. is made from silica sand, which is um, sand that's composed of majority silica, which is silicon dioxide, which actually ends up being the most common mineral on planet Earth. Seriously though, toothpaste is so bad. Oh God. <coughs> Mother of Pearl, uh, found in this abalone shell, is actually a, a biogenic mineral, meaning that it's a mineral formed from an animal, from a living thing. Concrete that we rely on for building materials is traditionally made with cement, and cement has been made with limestone for hundreds of years. Limestone, which is a um, biogenic rock, so it's made from dead animals, contains calcium carbonate, which you guessed it, is a mineral. Everything here, the laptops, the TVs, the tablets, the, probably the device that you're using to watch this video right now has so many different kinds of minerals in it. From the glass that we talked about earlier to the gold in the motherboard, the rare earth elements which are major components of um, smartphones and other smart devices, all of those minerals um, are essential functional pieces of your device. Pretty wild. Ice, or rather water in its liquid crystalline form exhibits all the necessary properties of a mineral, including especially that crystalline form that um, occurs when it freezes. This of course isn't true a true mineral because it's man-made uh, and in natural form of ice, but in its naturally occurring state, ice is mineral. So there you have it, rock stars. Everything from the ice in your drink to the battery of your phone is composed and made from mighty minerals. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> Mighty Minerals. Ah. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know. Um, feel free to leave a comment, especially if you know some minerals that I didn't mention that make up some household um, everyday objects or uh, materials that you use. And feel free to also smash that subscribe button because we'll be coming at you again. Coming at you straight from the underground. It's Rock Talk. Smash that subscribe button. Um, like. Um, deposit your comment in the comment section and we'll catch you on the next video. <clears throat> deposit your comment? <clears throat>